Good morning. It's Tuesday morning, October 6th. We're in the book of Proverbs, so we're in chapter 6. Uh, I'm glad to be with you this morning. Glad that you're hopping on and, and joining. So I, I greet you. Uh, I'm Pastor Karen, the prayer pastor at Radiant Life Church, and uh, just delighted to be with you this morning. Proverbs is one of those books, as you figured out so far, there is so much packed into each chapter. It's really hard to pick one thing out to focus on for just a few minutes uh, because you could probably preach several sermons from each chapter. So let me just tell you a little bit about chapter 6. Uh, chapter 6 starts out uh, talking um, about some financial responsibility, fiscal responsibility, uh, about not f being foolish in, in lending money. Not that it's wrong to lend money, but there's a right way to do it and a, a way that uh, can kind of get yourself backed up against the wall. The second part, uh, as you move through the chapter, talks about um, just not being lazy. It talks about the ant who prepares uh, for the winter and, and just uh, again being responsible with the resources that God has entrusted to us during our lifetime. Then there's a part I'm going to talk about. I'm going to skip right now. Um, the, the latter part just talks about adultery which is a, a very strong theme of Solomon's um, written to his sons. Now if you know his background, um, you know Solomon had lots of wives, so he had lots of sons and he's just saying, don't be foolish. Don't be foolish by um, using your sexuality uh, with prostitutes or in adultery or in promiscuity. Uh, there's some verses in there that you maybe have heard your parents quote, or, uh, not even especially in regard to sex, but in regard to other things in verse 20. 7 it says can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched in other words there there are effects uh, from, from the choices that we make there are things that um, God forgives us God loves us but there are things that, that sometimes stay with us for a lifetime um, when we go against what God would have for us God's perfect will for us which is is not to sin so the verses I want to look at start in verse 16 now you and I use the words love and hate kind of loosely we say oh, I really love spaghetti or I really hate such and such a football team but when the Bible talks about the word hate that's a really strong word uh, Jesus talks about it in the Sermon on the Mount uh, you know that, that that is a really strong word Fourteen times in the book of Proverbs, uh, the authors talk about things that God hates. And as, I, as I've researched it, it basically is these are things that God opposes. They are opposite God's character. So when we look at what God hates, um, we find out who God is because his character is not the things that he hates. And just keep in mind here, you know, it might talk about it as a person, but God loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his son um, to provide forgiveness of sins. Um, so it's the sin that he hates, but sin separates us from God. Let's not forget that. So Proverbs 6, 6 16 through 19, it says, There are six things the Lord hates, are in opposition to God. They're opposite his character. Seven that are detestable to him, and some of the, the commentators say that it's the seventh one that he lists that's detestable. First of all, he says, God hates haughty eyes. I'll let you look that up to see what that means. A lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man the seventh, a man who stirs up dissension among his brothers. Unity is really important to God. God is in unity as Father, Son, Holy Spirit, as Trinity. Jesus, um, in the last evening that he talked with his disciples, talked so he prayed for their unity, he prayed for our unity, um, and that dissension uh, is something that just, uh, you, you know, if there's disunity in a church, what kind of problems that causes? God is unity. So th these are, I want you to just to go back today and kind of meditate on this a little bit. Again, you could probably preach a sermon on each one of those. But just, just let me tell you what this reminded me of or this what this took me back to as I read this. 
took me back to the Garden of Eden. It took me back to when um, Adam and Eve sinned and how shalom, God's perfect peace, God's perfect unity was broken. And just look at those. Uh, how Satan came against God uh, by deceiving Adam and Eve. Uh, haughty eyes. There was arrogance in, in the serpent and Satan. He, he lied. He devised wicked schemes. Um, he enticed Adam and Eve to, to rush into evil um, because they wanted to know the difference between good and evil. Uh, he was a false witness who poured out lies, and he destroyed unity. He created dissension. Just my thoughts on that this morning. Um, again, there's, there's 14 different times uh, that Proverbs talks about things that God hates. J just the idea that hate means it's it's in opposition to God it's what God is not it's what God cannot be just remember this morning that God loves you so much that he doesn't want you to leave you the way that you are um, he sent Jesus he he speaks to us in our spirit because he wants to root out any of these things in our lives that are in opposition to him because he wants us to be with him eternally and be united with him and one in him in spirit so thanks for letting me share this morning let's just bless the day father we thank you for this day for a new opportunity to share your radiant love to those around us and to be like jesus thank you for your word which sometimes it's hard to figure out but other times it's so clear and i thank you for the holy spirit who who teaches us and may we just sit on this scripture today. Meditate on it. Uh, ask us what it means to us and how it should impact our lives to change us to be like your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, go be radiant. Be like Jesus.